Drones are playing a key role in the Russia-Ukraine war, where battles are being won by whichever side has superior drone technology. As the war transitions into its next phase, the Russian military has begun a new offensive operation, and Ukrainian forces are assuming a defensive posture. At this juncture, Ukraine appears to hold the upper hand in drone warfare, which has allowed them to effectively thwart this new Russian offensive. In a recent attack, Ukrainian FPV drone operators from the Spartan Brigade were seen destroying a BTR-82 that was trying to overrun a Ukrainian Defense Forces position. After being hit by an FPV drone, the armored personnel carrier catches fire and the vehicle is seen continuing to move. Russian infantry soldiers are then seen emerging from the BTR-82 and trying to hide in a destroyed building, which is destroyed by precision drops and FPV drones. But in the end, these soldiers then became targets for Ukrainian drone bombs. In general, over the past week, the troops of the Spartan Brigade have destroyed two Russian tanks, damaged a Ural truck, a D-20 howitzer and one armored fighting vehicle. Moreover, Ukrainian drone operators certainly couldn't believe their eyes when they focused their cameras on the Russian strike group moving towards the Ukrainian front lines in Zaporizhia Oblast, southern Ukraine. The attack appeared to end in disaster for Russia when Ukraine's 118th Mechanized Brigade opened fire with anti-tank missiles and FPV drones, destroying at least 11 Russian vehicles, including a T-40 tank. It appears the assault force included troops and vehicles from the Russian Airborne Corps 76th Guards Air Assault Division, once an elite formation with better training and equipment than most Russian divisions. But something was wrong. The tank leading the attack was not a modern T-72 or T-90, but was a 1950s vintage T-55 equipped with anti-drone armor. Russia's armed forces are now deploying tanks that were obsolete 50 years ago and had been stored in open warehouses for decades before Russia began recommissioning them last year to compensate for major losses of modern vehicles in Ukraine. It is now increasingly clear that Russian industry is unable to produce enough modern vehicles to replace the estimated 400 tanks, combat vehicles and howitzers lost each month this year. That's a monthly loss rate that's a third higher than the loss rate in September. Therefore, the Kremlin is pulling more and more old vehicles from long-term storage and assigning them to more units that once operated the best new equipment in the Russian inventory. Russia is constantly rebuilding its forces and trying to compensate for losses, including recruiting new personnel and creating new military units and districts, Ukrainian analysis group Frontelligence Insight explained. But that doesn't mean rebuilding brings power back to its previous strength. According to open-source intelligence collective Oryx, Russian vehicle losses since the start of the wider invasion in February 2022 exceed 15,000 vehicles, including nearly 2,900 tanks. This number is the same as the number of tanks owned by the Russian armed forces which were on active duty two years ago. Russia cannot replace these figures within two years, Frontelligence emphasized. Russian factories probably produce 600 new tanks annually and also restore large numbers of old tanks. These replacements are too few, which explains why more Russian attacks involve completely unarmored civilian vehicles. And the worst-case scenario for Russian units is that they do without vehicles, as recently happened around one battleground city in the east. Russian troops were forced to carry out infantry attacks on the positions of the defending forces in the Bakhmut direction due to the lack of armored vehicles, the Center for Defense Strategy of Ukraine said. That is, it is clear by now that Russia is expending military resources much faster than they can replenish them. When military aid is so limited that Ukraine's ammunition supplies are depleted, Russia intends to initiate further offensive operations to achieve significant, albeit slow, progress on the battlefield, Jack Watling and Nick Reynolds, analysts at the Royal United Services Institute in London, confirmed. These advantages were then intended to be used as leverage against Kyiv to force surrender on Russian terms. With ammunition supplies in Ukraine dangerously low, 
an inevitable consequence of the suspension of American aid, Russian leaders sensed an opportunity to advance. In other words, for Russian forces in Ukraine, if the current offensive fails, America ultimately chooses to provide aid and Ukraine rearms. Russia may realize that it has exhausted its forces, and no longer has a quick way to recover them when Ukraine again seizes the initiative. Наш комплекс во время СВО работал уже по многим... 